In this lesson, we'll get a quick overview of the sculpting and painting workflow in Mudbox before we actually get started on our project. So let's go ahead and just bring in a mesh and I'm just going to bring in a sphere. And we want to start to sculpt this. Okay, so at the at this particular level, it's got two levels coming in. There are a few things that we can do. Uh, the grab brush is under the sculpt tool. So we can grab this here. You can see the little icon as we float over our model. There's a little dot in a circle around it. So the circle represents the brush size. We can change the brush size by hitting B on our keyboard. As I hit that, you can see the strength indicator also shows up, that vertical line. And if I click and drag, in this case, I'm working with a, a grip pen, uh, a Wacom, uh, Wacom grip pen on an Intuos 5 tablet. And this is going to really help us because we want to use the pressure sensitivity to really dial in the detail that we want to add. So um, we use Wacom products in all of our training. Highly recommend that you check those out if you uh, don't already have one. So let me dial up the brush size. Okay. You can see that that size changes over here in our brush properties window. We also have the strength value, which is currently at 100. To change the strength, I'll hit the M key. Okay, M is in Michael, and dial that strength down. Okay, and I can so I can very quickly go back and forth. Now those are the keys on the keyboard. You can also, if you're using a tablet like this, you could set express keys to serve those functions as well. Then you don't have to always move to the keyboard. So uh, I've got grab selected though. So let's come in and now you can see that I can just click on any part of this model and just kind of pull it out. So we're not really adding material. It's almost like we're just grabbing parts of the model and just pulling it out with our fingers. So that's one way of working and a lot of times you'll, uh, we'll use this at kind of lower resolution levels because we can create large-scale changes to the mesh. Okay. Now anytime I want to smooth out any strokes that I've made, all I have to do is hit shift on the keyboard and now as I paint across this it's kind of smoothing everything back out. You can also access the smooth brush here to do the same thing and you can dial in the strength and brush size just as you would with any other tool. Now at some point you'll come to uh, a point where you can't really add any more resolution or any more detail because the resolution is so low so you can go ahead and subdivide it. Let's just subdivide a few times and we don't need the wireframe here right now so I can subdivide and we're up to now 300,000 polygons. So if we go ahead and grab the sculpt brush here Let's take our brush size down a little bit and let's increase our strength. You can see I can come in and sculpt a stroke across. Now you can see at the beginning of the stroke, it blends into the mesh. And at the end, it's sticking up quite a bit. And this is dependent on your pressure. So if I push down really hard, you can see I've got a large detail pulled out. If I push down very small amount, you can see that the detail is very small. Okay, so that's a, a really advantage of working with a, a pressure sensitive tablet. I can also go back in and smooth out this area. So even here I can smooth this out, but you can see the smooth is not really having a huge effect. That's because we have such a high resolution here. It's smoothing between all of those points. So if you wanted to take down this large shape, you'd have to move down your subdivision levels by hitting page down, and then you could come in and smooth that large shape back out a little bit into the surface because now you're working again with that lower resolution. And you can always still go back up to your higher levels and continue sculpting but you can see now that we've been able to modify that sort of shape. Now the shape of the actual uh, stroke or how that's laid down you can define that using the fall off and so you can see a little white, a little white line around the fall off that's selected and you can also access the fall off for a particular brush by going down into the properties to fall off and you can see it here. This is kind of the shape of the brush. So if we were to select a fall off kind of like this and draw this out, you can see it almost comes to kind of a point. And that sort of is reflect uh, a reflection of the fall off. If we were to come in here and say, I don't want any fall off, you can see there's no smoothness at all to it. Here you can see it's more of a hump. And so by defining this fall off, and you can change these uh, coming in here and modifying these in your uh, brush properties as well you can change that fall off. All right, what we can also do is create strokes that are symmetrical. So if we're 
working on an object that is symmetrical from one side to another, we can choose to mirror our detail. And you can see we get an indication of the plane across which it's going to mirror it. And these are all the same because uh, we, have, we haven't moved the model at all. So if we choose X, I can come in here and let's just get uh, this fall off. Let's take our strength down a little bit. And now we can come in and start to work symmetrically. Now we looked at smoothing, but what happens if we want to actually reverse the function of these sculpt tools? Right now it's pulling this out, and I can so I can pull it out and I can smooth it. What if I want to push things in? I can turn on this little invert function checkbox here, or I can come in and hit control as I sculpt. So instead of shift, it's control, and that'll push that in. So you can see it's now pushed it in. And then shift will allow me to smooth it back out. So you can work very quickly building up geometry right here, smoothing it out, pushing it in, smoothing it back out. And that's all just with a couple of keys that are very close together. And again, if you add those to your express keys, you can kind of speed things up even more. All right, you could even add them to the side switch on your grip pen if you want to. All right, so you can come in here and begin to sculpt all of your detail. And there's a lot of different brushes. You can see this sculpt tool kind of pulls the detail out. But if you use something like maybe wax, it's a little bit more like adding material. So kind of a clay or wax type of an effect where you can just add material on top of the mesh. So if you're working, you like working a little bit more in a sculptural way, you could try that. Okay, and you can see there's a lot of different tools that you're able to use here as you do this. All right, so that's uh, a quick look at sculpting, and we'll look at specific tools as we go through our project. You just need to have enough resolution to get the amount of detail that you have. If you start coming in and you start getting facets, you know, you can tell you're going to start to want a little bit more resolution because you don't have enough in there. So then you move up your, re your subdivision levels and you know, once you run out of detail again, you can come in and add another subdivision level. All right, so once we've got the object sculpted, we may want to paint a texture for this. Um, and so that's going to be a paint layer. Each texture is going to be a paint layer. And to access our paint layers, we can go to Paint Tools. And all we have to do is click on the paintbrush and click on the model. And that's going to, if it doesn't already have a paint layer, then it's going to ask us to bring up one. And so it'll let you name it. So these aren't tied to the resolution of the polygons. This is going to be a UV-based texture map that we can paint. So we need a size, and we can choose the format that we want to save it as, and also the channel. So if you're just painting color, you'll choose Diffuse, but you can paint all of these different channels here as well. You can hit OK. And now this paint layer or texture map appears in our Layers tab over here under Paint. You can see that we have diffuse, we have a diffuse group, we get have multiple paint layers within this diffuse. Then we can come in with our paintbrush. The methods for changing the brush size and the strength are exactly the same, the B key and the M key. We can choose a particular color. Okay, so we can go to our color picker here. We can choose the color that we want to that we want to paint. We can choose the strength we want to use to paint this. And we can choose the brush size. So now we can come in here and just begin to paint across our model. And that's all saved in here. In our UV view, we can see the paint being applied to our model with UVs. So I can come in and I can start to change colors. If I wanted to change some colors, I could also use the eyedropper to sample back a, a color if I wanted to do that. I can also come in and erase paint out of that particular texture or paint layer. So I could come in and erase paint. I can also, holding down shift, which we use to smooth out the sculpted detail, when I'm painting, um, I can hold down shift, and that'll actually blur out the paint, which may be nice in making transitions and things like that. Okay, we can also, and you know, there's a lot of different paint options in here, we can also use stamps, and we can do this with our sculpt brush or our paint brush. Um, in this case, we'll go ahead and go to Stamp, and we can just select, uh, let's just select one of these stamps. You can see that loaded up in our brush properties here. The stamp is loaded up here. Um, we can choose to randomize it, so when we lay it down, you can see it's randomly placing copies of 
this with the color we've selected, and it's randomizing the rotation, the position, the scale, all based on the settings that we've chosen in here. So this is a nice for really creating uh, some blotchy skin and some more natural type detail. So we can start to paint this in, and then you know we could change the color up a little bit and start to layer all these things together. So maybe make it a little bit darker, can get a larger brush size, kind of fill that in a little bit, and then maybe here we'll uh, create kind of a lighter color. And just by building those up, you can start to create your texture map. Okay, now the texture map is still in this paint layer. We can turn the paint layer on or off. We can also dial in the strength of the paint layer. So I can take that strength up or down to blend different paint layers together. And we can also change the blend mode, which we don't really have any other paint layers to work with. But you can see just based on the interaction with the material color underneath that the blend modes have different effects depending on which one that you pick. And so there's a lot of uh, nice features in here for dealing with uh, paint layers and texture maps, kind of a Photoshop style with the, the layers blended together using blend modes and uh, strength or visibility. And so you can have multiple maps and, and really get a nice flexible workflow with your painting. All right, so this doesn't really look like anything. And so what we want to do is go ahead and start to begin working on our uh, project. So the project will include a character and a couple of set pieces and kind of make something that will uh, give you something to, to kind of look at at the end to say that you've uh, completed something tangible. Uh, okay, so 